in this presentation, I would like to tell you about the national system of medical devices for the first one. Uh, last 15 years, I worked in the field of state registration in Russia, CIS, and the European Union countries. And I would like to share with you uh, my experience. Uh, this presentation is uh, mostly for a regulatory audience because it contains a lot of uh, regulatory uh, details uh, that typically very boring for business people. Uh, and uh, my purpose is to give you an overview of uh, national regulatory landscape. Uh, and it requires to enlighten the most significant details. Uh, you can see the agenda of our event. I'm going to tell you about the competent state authorities. We will talk about state legislation and rules of registration. Of course, we will review the scheme of state registration and national effects of testing and evaluation. Also, I briefly tell you uh, about uh, the documents and the registration. Uh, we will move from the general things to particular things, and also I would like to tell you about some important particular matters. I'm talking about the role of the authorized representative and why it is so important. Also, we will have uh, questions and answers session, and uh, we will talk about all these things from applicants' point of view. Let's imagine uh, that we are going to submit a dossier for registration and let's check the critical things for our success as applicant for state registration. So let's start from the beginning, competent authority. Uh, look at this organization chart. There is not something absolutely new. It's typical structure of competent authority. Because the Ministry of Health, or in Russian, Russian, it's the principal executive body in the field uh, that is responsible for health policy and legislation. So the body responsible for state registration of medical devices is federal service for surveillance in healthcare of Grasnadzor in Russia. This body is subordinate uh, to the ministry. And I should mention two expert authorities who perform the subject expertise on the registration dossier. These are National Institute of Quality and Institute of uh, medical devices testing and development is the oldest scientific organization in the field. Uh, these bodies have their own testing uh, laboratory. Uh, the next branch of uh, government that makes a contribution in the field, but in indirect way. It's a branch of Ministry of Economy, Federal State for Accreditation, ROS Accreditation in Russia. Uh, ROS Accreditation regulates the fields of testing laboratories by issuing the accreditation certificate. So this arrow demonstrates how they regulate, how they impact the testing laboratories every year. Uh, these are testing laboratories that can perform medical uh, devices uh, testing. Uh, and uh, how how is the sound right now? Oh, oh, thank you, Th thank you for your feedback. Thank you. I see. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, proceed with uh, uh, our chart. Uh, so, uh, 
uh, as I said, uh, these are tests in laboratories that can perform medical devices testing for state registration, and most of them are private organization. Uh, and uh, ROS accreditation uh, gives the accreditation certificates for other labs that are part of expert authorities or uh, other organization. Uh, ROS Draft Nadzor, in his turn, gives the uh, permission uh, confirmation that the labs can perform the testing of medical devices for state registration. The, this green arrow on the scheme. So uh, as you can see, this structure is rather linked and interdependent. Uh, Taking into account all this information, we can see that the medical device is a subject uh, of regulation from two branches of government, uh, from this and this, from health authorities, uh, I'm talking about Ministry of Health, and technical regulation bodies here on the right side of the chart. Medical device should have two approval documents. Registration certificate from Rosdraft Nadzor. It's a critical document, and all this presentation is about uh, how to get this document. And declaration uh, of conformity uh, issued by technical regulation bodies. This document relates to the technical conformity of the device, and it's not connected with intended use and medical nature of uh, the device. There were a lot of disputes about the necessity of safety evaluation of medical devices by two branches of government. And this year, declaration of conformity was finally cancelled, but it creates a situation uh, of regulatory uncertainty because the document is dead, but the requirements of safety confirmation are formally stay alive. Uh, it's a main issue of the beginning of this uh, 2020 first year. I will uh, back to this issue later. Uh, let's return to the slide and continue. These documents have different legal meaning. Registration certificate confirms that the product is a medical device. In accordance with national laws, the product is safe and can be used in medical practice. Declaration of conformity, it's only about technical regulation. Declaration means that the product compliant to national technical standards and technical regimens of customs union, therefore the product is safe. And again, these documents duplicate each other in a safety section here. Uh, in our presentation, as I said before, we will review the left part of this slide, the state registration of medical devices, only as the most complex and challenging. And uh, as, you, um, as you see, the technical regulation becomes a non-relevant topic now. As I said before, declaration of conformity is cancelled, and this raised a lot of uh, confusion among stakeholders. It was the topical issue of the first working weeks after a long uh, Russian winter holidays. Uh, just because the, the, the de declaration of conformity typically used during the customs clearance to confirm product codes. Uh, now it's possible to get a voluntary certificate. It's next step of development of this system. Voluntary certificate to have additional documents confirming technical safety and national product code. Uh, now the custom service use only the registration certificate for customs clearance. And uh, we can say that the situation is more or less clear now. So again, the registration certificate is most important document for uh, medical devices. Let's move to the state legislation section. We can imagine the state legislation system as three leveled pyramid. On the right side of this pyramid here, uh, you can see the paper pack. It's my try to explain the number of laws on each level of this pyramid. The first level is the highest level of regulation. 
these are federal laws and government orders. Third, uh, second level, it's uh, operational documents uh, that directly regulate the process. These documents contain uh, direct rules, obligations, timelines, etc. And third, third level, it's bylaws, explanatory letters or particular recommendations for concrete parts of the registration process. As we know, uh, the interpretation of laws generate a lot of questions and concerns. So the third level is the explanations from authorities. I would like to start with the most important document at the first level. It's the federal law 323 FZ on the fundamentals of protection of the public health. And the most valuable for us in is Article 38. Uh, point one, where is a definition? What is medical device? Please look at this definition. Uh, Okay. Uh, as you can see, the definition is in line with World Health Organization and European Year Union definition, but with some specificity, national specificity, of course. But the main point is the same here, which function is not implemented by pharmacological, immunological, genetic, or metabolic effects of the human body. And to recap this slide, we need to say only registered medical devices can circulate in Russia. The next, next law is order 1416. Please remember this order, it's basic rules of state registration. These documents came into force in 2013 here. Uh, it's not correct to say uh, that there are not any rules of registration before. The state registration of medical devices in Russia started about 2003 year. I have come to the medical industry in 2005 and we have very simple registration procedure that time. Uh, highly bureaucratized, but simple in providing the evidences of safety and effectiveness of the devices. The order 4016 uh, provided new approach to the registration procedure. There were dramatical changes in procedure, so we have to start from the scratch in registration. It was very incomplete raw document and it was repeatedly amended almost every year after the registration, as you can see on this slide. The main point of order 1416, all the medical devices must be duly registered and the registration procedures are described in this document. On the next slide, you can see the second level documents. These are orders of the ministry. These documents regulate the particular aspects of the registration procedure, national classification, the requirements to the technical information, etc. These are about uh, 15 documents here, but I would like to show you only several important ones, especially order 2N, order 11 N and new order 661 N. Also, these are the orders of Rosdravnadzor. These documents also regulate some specific aspects, how electronic services should work, how the procedure should work, appearance of the registration certificate, etc. As I said before, the third level is recommendation and, and explanations. Look at this slide, please. 
these documents describing how we should arrange the application, what kind of information we should include in the technical document, what size of the drawings, pictures, etc. It's recommendations for state expert, but the documents are available for all the applicants. I recommend to look into this recommendation each time when you prepare in the dossier. And I would like to inform you about the latest documents in the field of registration. It's a new amendments to the federal legislation on medical devices. Briefly, it's an effort to harmonize uh, national regulation with Eurasian requirements. Also, these are some long expected correction to the um, current legislation, but these uh, things doesn't impact the registration process. And as you know, there are not only white paper and black letters, there are also gray zone in each document. So there are some suppositions, some possibilities that national registration procedure may be prolonged or may be an additional transitional period. It's important thing for applicant. As you know, the national registration procedure will be a thing of the past in the next year and the national procedure will be replaced by Eurasian procedure and we have we will have separate webinar on the Eurasian Union registration system another document of uh, <clears throat> uh, December of 2020 year that dramatically changed the import permission procedure uh, you can see this document on this slide order 661 and <clears throat> Now we can submit the application for samples importation only via national portal, portal GOS Slugi, portal of state services. So this part of registration will be fully digital. We should submit all the documents in scans and we will get permission as digital document. Uh, now, now let's uh, slightly digress from the legislation and ask a question where we can find all these documents. The easiest way to use the Rosdraftnadzor's website. Uh, here is a link. It's very valuable web resource for applicants. They have a se separate section for medical devices where you can find all the legislation and documents. Unfortunately, they have very poor English version. Uh, but even if you know Russian, it's sometimes hard to find what you need. But again, it's a very valuable resource. Uh, the most significant electronic database on this website is the State Register of Medical Devices. It's a very important source of information for applicant. It's, it's here, State Register. You can find here the information on already uh, registered medical devices, oversee the national classification codes, and find the analog device for your registration. Uh, of course, you can find also your uh, rival products here. The next uh, valuable uh, source of information here is National Classificatory of Medical Devices. And uh, all these services are absolutely free. And now the most important and complex part, the National Registration System, the scheme. Look at this slide. <clears throat> It's original scheme from official presentation and it uh, looks like a puzzle, really. But here we can understand that the process is rather complex and have several stages. For example, uh, these stages can be consequential or parallel. It's hard to understand from this chart. Uh, it's my own version of the scheme. I, I pretend to be more clear and concise here. Uh, first of all, on the top of the scheme, we can see that we have different classes of medical devices and registration pathways for them are different. Generally, our national uh, risk classification is very similar to European Union classification, but of course there are some differences. Let's look at the left, uh, left part of, of the scheme. You can see 
the regulatory pathway for low risk devices and IVD products, one stage of registration. So it's only, only one, only first stage of registration here. <laughs> On the uh, right part of the scheme, 2A, 2B, third risk class devices with two staged process. It's uh, uh, pink color on, on this scheme. We will divide the process into two big phases, pre-submission phase and after submission phase. The first includes a big scope of work preparation of the technical documentation, in-country or field testing, uh, state use, et, et cetera. The second, the second phase, it's uh, reviewing and subject expertise in competent authorities. This part may be very interesting for regulatory people and may not so inspiring for business people. Uh, let's imagine uh, again that we are an applicant for the state registration and we are on the initial state of the stage of the process. Let's review the phases in details. Please look at the slide. Uh, you can see here uh, several steps. Step one, uh, authorized representative in Russia should be appointed by the power of attorney. Step two, uh, you should identify the national nomenclature classification code, national risk class and predicator for your device uh, already duly registered in Russia. Step three, contract with an authorized test labs in Russia for in-country or field testing. Information on the device, technical file or design dossier and existing test reports should be provided to the testing lab. And the lab determines the testing requirement and quantity of samples. Step four, preparation and submitting import permit application to Rosdraf. Uh, as I said before, now it's fully digital procedure. Uh, you should provide the serial number or lot on the products. Uh, after that, you can get the import permission. And step five, you uh, should import the devices, uh, deliver them to the authorized test lab in Russia and perform the in-country testing. Uh, typically, uh, testing includes uh, toxicological, biological, and technical uh, tests. Uh, if medical device have a measuring function, it requires to get part an approval certificate before. After that, you should have the following documents in your hands. Reports from Russian testing labs, technical and operational documentation prepared in accordance with the national requirements, administrative documents from the manufacturer, application and uh, state use should be paid. All these documents uh, should be submitted to the Rosdravnadzor. After submission phase, uh, step one, it's submission of the registration dossier uh, that includes application, administrative part, technical part, normative exploitation documentation and test report. Uh, step two, uh, uh, state authorities will uh, review the dossier. Uh, Rosdraft performs the dossier completeness review. If passed, dossier sent into a federal expertise center for subject examination that it will be the first stage of expertise. So depending on the results uh, of reviewing, uh, expert organization will issue permit for clinical trials. If you are re registering uh, to A to B and third risk class devices or a letter of deficiency. So if you get a letter of deficiency, you should provide the additional explanation, makes appropriate corrections to the dossier. And uh, step three, uh, with the permit for clinical trials, you need to conduct clinical evaluation in authorized Russian clinic. Uh, during this period, the registration process is placed in suspended status. So the time is stopped uh, here. And step four, after successful 
completion of the clinical evaluation, you should submit clinical dossier to ROSDRAF and apply for continuation of the registration process. Uh, and it should be the first stage of expertise. And uh, depending on uh, expert decision, ROSDRAF will issue a registration certificate and include your medical device in official uh, state register. Uh, issue another letter of deficiency uh, or refusing registration. Uh, finally, uh, this is uh, our long desired treasure registration certificate. Uh, I would like to emphasize some things that you will see in this document. Uh, name of the device, of course. Uh, it should be noted that the name of uh, medical device should be the same uh, in registration certificates and in all other documents, uh, this name should match uh, manual of use, labeling boxes, uh, etc. Holder of the registration certificate. It can be the manufacturer, it can be the authorized representative, it can be the owner of rights. Uh, of medical device in Russia, or for example, exclusive distributor. Risk class, risk class also will be included in the document. And national product code, national classification code. It's, it's uh, as I said before, it's very important matter for customs clearance. Uh, let's dig in more details of the process of so our topic is registration dossier. The structure of the registration dossier is the following. Administrative part, administrative documentation, technical documentation, operational or exploitation documentation, and in-country test reports. Uh, it should be noted that the most uh, complex part is a technical document or technical file that should be written in accordance with the national rules. Usually we take the original stead or technical dossier or original technical file, it depends on the device, uh, from the manufacturer, extract all the required information from the document and include national uh, section, national requirements. Uh, sorry. Also, we should include some addendums uh, to the operational documentation, I mean uh, instruction or manual of use. Usually we arrange it as a specific addendum for Russian market or additional section in original IFU. Testing and evaluation. There are a lot of questions from the client side on the process. It's, it's Article 5 from our order 1416. State registration of medical devices is based on the results of technical tests, psychological studies, clinical trials. All the details of the testing process are provided by order to N. Order to N is a very important document for the applicant. This order establish the forms of testing requirements to the testing uh, labs, requirements to the test reports and other things. On the press submission phase, we should uh, perform uh, toxicology. Uh, after successful completing the uh, next, it's uh, technical tests. Please uh, pay your attention. Uh, these are three things you should, should know uh, about the testing.
testing laboratory must be authorized by Rosdravnadzor and Federal Service for Accreditation. Testing laboratory must have valid accreditation certificate with specified area of accreditation. And before start the testing proce procedure, you, you must make sure that the area of accreditation contains your specific device. And uh, here is a critical point. You as applicant should check the authorization and scope of accreditation of the chosen lab to be on the safe side. So, okay, it's, it's very interesting, but uh, where we can find the information on the laboratories? On the Rosdravnadzor website, of course, as I said before, Rosdravnadzor's website, it's very valuable source of information. We can find here the electronic database uh, of the testing labs that are authorized by Rosdraf. So here is the link. But it's not a full story. As I said before, there are two branches of regulation. We already learned the Ministry of Health branch, but uh, let's remember the second branch. It's database of ROS accreditation. It's symbol of ROS accreditation. This is the register of conformity assessment bodies and testing laboratories. We should use this web resource to check the scope of, of accreditation of our lab. The database is partially in English, but uh, unfortunately the most important data on the labs uh, on, on Russian. Uh, you should check the scope of accreditation to get a clear vision. Is the lab authorized to, to test your device? After that, you can conclude the agreement with the lab for testing. The next interesting adventure uh, is clinical testing. Look at this slide. There is an extract from order to N and description on the clinical evaluation performing. As you can see, there are two pathways for clinical trials as research in form of research. Uh, we, we call it literature review and trials with human subjects involving human subjects. And also uh, some important things you should know as applicant. Uh, trials of medical devices with human participation are performing in the following cases. A new type of medical device, the use of new complex or unique or special methods or special technologies. If the efficacy and safety of your medical device not confirmed during the uh, literature review, uh, in all other cases, we can perform the clinical trials in form of literature review, and we call it clinical evaluation. Uh, the next uh, important things uh, concerning the clinical evaluation. Clinical organization must, be, must have license or medical practice you should, issued by Rosdravnadzor. Clinical organization must have valid authorization letter from Rasdraf Nadzor with specified area of accreditation. Clinical organization must be included in Rosdraf Nadzor's uh, database. And of course, before start the clinical trials, you must make sure that the area of accreditation contains your specific device. Rosdravnadzor website uh, can also help us to get an information on clinical evaluation and clinics. Uh, there is a database on all authorized clinic and here, here the link. The clinic that you choose to perform the clinical evaluation should have a license for medical practice and should be included in the list of authorized organization. Here on the slide, you can see the sample of this license. Clinics license should include the medical specialization or field of medical use of your device. Uh, it's an extract from real medical practice license on the slide. For example, if you're performing the clinical evaluation of cardiology devices, as example, cardio stents, the cardiology practice here, 
uh, should be included in the license. So the same thing for other type of devices, for example, oncology, on ophthalmology on this slide. And uh, that's all for clinical trials. And uh, we, with this slide, we are closing the topic on testing of medical devices. Uh, in this next module, we will discuss the post-registration activities. Uh, when you finally get the approval, you should start thinking about the safety monitoring. There are not any requirements to include the safety monitoring program in the dossier or provide any additional information on your vigilance activity, but the obligation on safety monitoring are included in our federal law. Here is an extract from the article uh, 96, uh, monitoring the safety of medical devices. Uh, medical devices in circulation on the territory of Russian Federation are subject to safety monitoring. And uh, who is the responsible site for safety monitoring? And uh, what is their responsibility? Uh, this is another extract from uh, uh, this article 96.3. Uh, 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 where responsible sites are described. Here we have a direct link to the article 38 and face the definition of the circulation of medical devices again. All the sites, uh, to recap and uh, briefly speaking, uh, all the sites who involve in device circulation process should report on the any adverse events, side effects, uh, etc. Again, uh, all the sites involved in the circulation should report uh, on the events. Uh, but in current situation, the authorized representative of the manufacturer becomes the responsible site. Uh, how we can report the event? Uh, on the Rosdraftnadzor website, we have a section, special section on safety monitoring of the medical devices. And first, uh, that you will find here that you should uh, pass the authorization and get a password and login to get an access to the system. You need to submit a letter to Rosdraft, confirm your authorization, provide the information on your legal entity, etc. After that, the access uh, will be granted for you. Uh, and uh, I recommend to use uh, another resource here, the field safety notice. These documents are consolidated in separate section. Uh, and there is a search engine that allows to scan this database. It's a very helpful resource. What we can find here. So uh, for example, safety updates from the manufacturer. Uh, information on recalls of the device, information on defective devices that we can, that uh, were found during the audit by the expert authorities. Uh, so that's uh, all about the national registration system. As you can see, the system is rather complex and have a lot of specific things and unwritten rules. So I've mentioned the most critical points that should be taken into consideration uh, of applicant during the uh, preparing the dossier for registration. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, we will move from general things to particular things. And I would like to tell about one particular thing, authorized representative and why his role uh, so important and what are the trends. Let's refer again to the order 1416 to learn who is authorized representative. It's a definition from article four. Authorized representative of the manufacturer is a legal entity or individual entrepreneur registered in the Russian Federation, authorized by the manufacturer of medical device, by the power of attorney. 
uh, to represent his interest on the circulation of medical devices in the Russian Federation. And it should be mentioned that authorized representative uh, may be a holder of uh, registration certificate. And uh, uh, Article 8. For state registration of medical devices, uh, developer, manufacturer uh, of medical devices or an authorized representative of the manufacturer submits an application for state registration. So uh, in this article, you can see the scope of the sites who can submit the application for state registration. So uh, it's possible uh, to submit the dossier um, from the manufacturer side, uh, but uh, you will encounter a lot of issues. So the best way here is to appoint the authorized representative in Russia. Uh, it helps uh, to avoid a lot of business problems also after the registration uh, of uh, the device. Uh, let's review the typical situation. Uh, of last five years. Uh, so why I'm talking about the authorized representative. Uh, uh, let's review this typical situation. Uh, the manufacturer have several distributors in Russia. Each distributor have uh, each distributor for specific uh, product. All the distributors have a power of attorney. They perform the registration activities for this for their product separately. The registration dossier and all the documents are in their possession. It's classic situation for 2005 2012 years. The registration process was uh, simple. Post marketing safety monitoring was a duty of uh, clinics and authorities. But the situation changed dramatically in 2013 with new legislation and new approach. And it happens that the manufacturer haven't owned any documents from the dossier. Moreover, the original registration certificates is in hands of the distributor. So the uh, next step that the manufacturer have to do to con consolidate all the documents in his hands. But uh, it, it's not easy to think. So some, some distributors cannot provide any document. The documents are lost. Some distributors ask to pay for the dossier, et cetera. More usually, the distributors uh, just lost all the documents. In this case, the authorized representative is a key. Uh, the authorized representative can consolidate all the information from distributors, recover the dossier, get the duplicates of the technical uh, of the registration certificate. So we should move from the situation on uh, this slide to the situation on this slide. Uh, incorrect, it's correct situation when the authorized representative now, independent from the distributors, hold and maintain the dossier and ready to update, uh, make amendments if it's required, provide any uh, documents and information for the, for, for the principal and state authorities. Also, authorized representative can supply the distributors with the notarial copies of the registration certificate or other documents if it's required. So uh, our company can be an authorized representative for manufacturing companies and perform all the appropriate activities in Russia. So uh, that's all for the authorized representative. Uh, it was a, a very brief uh, review on the current regulatory landscape in Russia. Of course, there are a lot of another pitfalls and unwritten rules. But it's not possible to tell about these things, uh, about all these things during the one lecture. And I've tried to highlight the most important things uh, that, uh, that uh, was very important uh, during uh, our national registration system 
exists. So uh, as, I, as I said, this year is the final year of the existing of national registration system. And in the next year, our national registration system will be totally replaced by Eurasian Union system. But uh, maybe, maybe it uh, will be prolonged. The registration certificates issued in accordance with the national system will be valid. Uh, will be valid on the territory of Russian Federation uh, without terms of validity. So uh, I, I think uh, that's, that's all. So I would like to announce uh, uh, another webinar uh, in Biomapas. We've planned three webinars on uh, the relevant regulatory issues in Russian Eurasian Union. On the next uh, webinar, we will review the uh, uh, complex medical, complex and multi-component medical devices registration. So you can see the example on this slide. It, it, it's just uh, it's just an example as an example of uh, uh, modern uh, technological, high technological device that uh, in incorporates to uh, technologies uh, of IVD. Uh, and uh, uh, I will um, tell about how, uh, what, what problems, what issues we encounter during the registration and our approach to overcome it. So uh, if you have any question, you can, uh, Write directly to uh, BD uh, Biomapas.com. Uh, we will. Uh, uh, I hope to see you on the next uh, webinar. As I said, it will be about the uh, uh, registration issue. So we will review uh, several groups of medical devices uh, difficult for registration. Uh, complex and multi-components devices. Uh, so again, thank you very much. Bye.